Before we begin, I'd like to start with some legal preamble. The following content is completely qualified by the legal disclosures on the slide following this one. Our goal is to share with you some of our strategic thinking and financial analysis we are using to guide the growth of our business. The content is in line with our principles of being accountable and transparent with shareholders. We operate in a hyperdynamic economic environment. That's a fancy way of saying things change quickly. What we are telling you here is based on our estimates and assumptions, which are our best guess, and we reserve the right to revise our point of view based on new information and changes in the business environment. Despite an uncertain dynamic environment, we must plan and make operating and investment decisions, and this presentation lays out some of that for your review. Our first question today comes from Michael. Michael asks, your 2023 Power Earning Illustration presentation is based on a $26,500 BTC price. Is your revenue projection directly tied to the BTC price? With BTC over 40000 does this increase your revenue with the same percentage growth even with your hosting agreements? Good question, Michael. Uh, revenue improves as hash price rises for our proprietary mining at Dorothy 1B where hash price has the most direct relationship to revenue and Project Sophie, where our hosting agreements, which include a profit share component. So as a reminder, we own 100% of Project Sophie, so that profit share uh, is directly uh, benefiting the company. And at Project Dorothy 1B, we own 51% uh, of the project, and so uh, about 51% of that profit increase goes to us and benefits the overall company and group. And at uh, Dorothy 1A, that's a hosting agreement. It's a fixed fee based on volumetric uh, components of power use. And so that doesn't rise with BTC price. Thanks for the question. The next question is from Greg. Will Saluna pay a year-end dividend on the 9% preferred ticker? The company's board is aware that the preferred dividend obligation accumulates and expects to pay a current dividend and the accumulated dividends when the company's earnings support such payments. While the board of directors has not declared a dividend for 2023, it continues to monitor the company's earnings and weigh a variety of growth and operating capital needs when making dividend payment decisions. So keep, stay tuned and we'll keep you posted as we evaluate this as a company. Next, Zach asks, what's the latest on financing for Dorothy 2? Also, any line of sight into the timeline for Cadi? We are working with two prospective project-level investors to architect the deal to finance uh, Dorothy 2 and beyond. We are hoping to close this financing by the end of the first quarter, early uh, second quarter of this year. And the deal we're contemplating would allow us to energize the first phase of Dorothy 2 in the second half of 2024. Cadi is a 166 megawatt project, which is progressing well. We've sent all required studies to ERCOT for the planning process review. That's been moving along very quickly. And so we're expecting to exit planning by the end of the quarter in our best guess uh, scenario. Thank you. Mario asks, I'm wondering what EBITDA looks like for Saluna at current and higher Bitcoin prices with current operations and any further operations turned on this year. And for clarity, can you clarify the total preferred common shares and net debt outstanding, et cetera? Well, similar to the previous question, which I believe Michael asked, um, EBITDA does improve as hash price rises for two of our projects, Dorothy 1B, which is a proprietary mining joint venture, so where hash price has the most direct relationship to revenue, and Project Sophie, where our hosting agreements include a profit share component. And as a reminder, we own 100% of Project Sophie, and we own 51% of Project Dorothy 1B. Uh, your question on share counts, uh, we won't go into the counts here in the AMA, but you can find share counts in our quarterlies. Go to the SEC website and look for our 10Q and 10K filings. Uh, you can also visit salunacomputing.com slash investors uh, for that information. We update it quarterly, so you should see 
an update on our share counts uh, once we post our 10K for the year of 2023. Thank you. The next question came from James. James asks, revenue guidance was given at 34 million for the data center side of the business. Is that number separate from any and all revenue generated for BTC mining? If so, what can shareholders expect to see for BTC mining alone? Also, there has been some concern or discussion around the cost of revenue for Saluna being higher than the revenue itself. In other words, negative profit margin. Is this a concern of management? And if so, what is the plan? So let's talk about revenue. Uh, our revenue is a combination of proprietary mining, Dorothy 1B, as I mentioned before, hosting revenue, which is Dorothy 1A, and profit share for Sophie. And as we add more projects, depending on the structure of those projects, we'll tell you what the revenue mix is and what the deal is at those projects. So to see revenue related to Bitcoin mining alone, please focus on the Dorothy Project 1B and Project Sophie revenue projections in those guidance uh, slides or the earnings uh, potential. When you look at our 10 Qs, you can see uh, revenue as well broken out by those projects and that will start to give you a sense. In our monthlies, we've published a hash rate by project and updates by project. In fact, we've got one coming up here this month. And those are great proxies to the revenue potential as well, because based on the hash rate, you can project what, what the project did from a revenue perspective using hash price, et cetera. We typically tend not to include revenue numbers in those monthlies because they're unaudited. And we like to publish our revenues on a quarterly basis in our 10Q. But those that framework that I gave you focused on Dorothy 1B, uh, Profit share at Sophie will give you BTC only. And then uh, for the rest of our revenue, you would look at Dorothy 1A. And as we bring Dorothy 2 and Cadi online and other revenue formats, you'll start to see those broken out as well. Now let's talk about the negative profit margin. Um, you must be referring to the negative gross margin profit in the first two quarters of 2023. Uh, remember, those were transition quarters. In Q1, we closed down Project Marie, which was a decommissioned uh, facility in Kentucky. And in Q2, we began the transitioning from Project Sophie uh, from a primarily prop proprietary mining business to a primarily hosting profit share business. So those negative profit margins were short-term experiences, and so management does not see this as a concern going forward. In fact, by now, um, when you looked at our results for Q3, you're already seeing uh, pretty robust performance across sites, and as has price increases, that's going to improve. Thanks for your question, James. Thank you for submitting your questions. We always appreciate uh, these questions coming in. In fact, uh, going forward, we'll try to include the AMA link in our press releases, so if you have questions about business announcements we make, you can answer those. If you're listening or reading to this and haven't had a chance to ask your question, it's not too late. Just fill out the form in the video description box. Drop your questions on X. We're at Saluna Holdings. And to have your questions answered in our next AMA installment, just post them to that form. If your question wasn't answered here, be sure to, to subscribe to our newsletter. It's also linked in the notes. We're providing business insights and answering questions there as well, and we do that on a regular basis. Until next time, thank you.